Hey guys, Southeast Soft Wash. Uh, we missed last week, Maintenance Monday. Had a crappy week last week, but uh, we're back this week. So this is, today is uh, the 17th of January. Doing another Maintenance Monday video. Got the man in the house right here. And what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about marrying two batteries together. Whether you want to create it wired in series or parallel, whether you want to increase your runtime or do you need 24 volts out of two batteries? Right. We're gonna cover both ways. And the reason behind this video is we're now building systems with the new 24 volt style pumps and those pumps are getting better as we speak. So they're tweaking and refining that concept. And because of that, a lot of you guys are getting our systems with 24s, you're building your own. And also this can be useful if you're running a 12 volt, you could expand your battery bank out just pretty much as far as you wanted to go. And it's gonna still have 12 volts, but you're gonna have a lot longer runtime in the field. Really not necessary on 12 volt. We've always found that a single battery is gonna work for you all day anyway. So we've never really had a need to do that, but it's an option for you guys. So let's talk about what, parallel first? Let's do parallel first. When we're looking at parallel, the easiest way for me to explain it to somebody is I line my, my positive post up in line with one another and my negatives. This is just to explain it. And then when you connect your hot post to your hot post on battery number two, and do the same with negative, it's running in parallel. That's the easiest way for me to mem remember it. Yep. You still got 12 volts, but your amp hours will be increased. So you're, you're gonna make yourself, you know, some little jumper wires like this, guys. Very important to use heavy gauge wiring. Don't go small here, this, this, this is 10 gauge. Um, but you need to use some good wiring. We just put some tape around this so it wouldn't really, we don't want it to be black or red for this video, just a wire, okay? You're just making a connection and like he said, these batteries could be laid out in any which way. This is just kind of the easiest way to think about it. Line them up, make your connections, and then you, you can lay them out in your box, whichever way you need to. So that's gonna give you parallel. You're still talking about a 12 volt bank, um, extra runtime, right? That, that's essentially what we're gonna get, a little more runtime. Okay, so what is series? When I, when I wear, wire it in series, what I'm gonna do is, rather than increasing my runtime, I'm adding 12 volts and 12 volts and ending up with 24. I'm gonna carry this wire from a hot side on battery number one to the ground on battery number two. Let's see, I'll do it for you. All right, you got one, I'll give you this side. Okay, and this is obviously, a, you would tidy all this stuff up. It's a little bit long. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes. So we're going here and you can keep doing this. You can get 36 volts, you can get 48, you can go, um, you can basically build a golf cart for what we were talking about earlier. This is how they, they make larger runtime things and larger voltage pulls. There's a whole channels out there, guys. It's pretty interesting where like dads take their kids little uh, Power Wheels car they got for Christmas that runs off a of 12 volt and they'll make freaking golf cart out of the thing and run it on like a 36 volt bank, put rubber tires on them. It's pretty funny to watch because <laughs> these little kids are zipping around 18 miles an hour in a plastic buggy. So we've, we've linked positive to the ground on battery two. And what we're gonna do is put a meter on it and show you guys what we've got. All right, we'll check it from here. Actually, what we wanna do is, is the two that we haven't connected to are gonna be the ones that we wanna run off of. Yep. And look at there, 24.6 volts. So what's happening is, is you would make your connection to your pump here and here out to your, your power, what you're trying to power. So the voltage is flowing, boom, 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 and out to the device, right? So that's 24.6 volts, but you still have the availability of 12 volts here if you've got a 12 volt system. Just make sure you run off of a singular battery. Yep. You're still gonna have 12 volts even though those our link. So you still got a 12 volt bank and that's how we're doing these in our equipment, uh, trailers and skids. We're running a 12 volt pump on one side. So it's just gonna tile for one battery, we're running a 24 bank to create 24 for the, the bigger pump. So that's gonna get both batteries. Now what's your runtime on that 24 volt bank? It's still it, one it, amp hours worth, one battery's amp hour. Exactly. Bank. You didn't double your amp hours, you just doubled your voltage. Correct. Now, another question we're getting a lot is, okay, how do I back charge this system? Do I need some kind of fancy charger? There's two ways to do it, right? Explain that. Well, in one way you could charge this 24 volt system as one, but you're going, it's gonna require a 24 volt charger, or 
you can use this nifty charger. It charges two batteries at once and charge them as two independent 12 volts. Yep, so we're a NOCO dealer and we use these chargers and we love them. NOCO is a really solid brand. Um, and this is a 12 volt bank and a 12 volt bank. And so the first one of these skids we did, we bought a, we put four in there to have extra run time and we bought a four bank. So it had dunk, 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 and we charged them each. This will do everything we need it to do. We've already got it terminaled out right here. So let's plug it up right here and let you guys see that it is gonna come on. And what it's doing is it's, it's just charging 12 volts here and 12 volts here. It's gonna go into its diagnostic, cut it on. And if we stand here long enough, we'll get some lights and it'll go up to green. So the only real negative charging it the other way is just you got a lot more wires. Well, I, I think you're limited the other way and it gets complicated because you're gonna be dragging a lot of wires in there. Yep. Um, it gets messy and it looks like spaghetti in there pretty quickly. So this is a way to keep it as streamlined as possible. The only negative drawback here for our purposes is we don't have a huge bank on the 24 volt side and it's pulling a lot of juice. So what we're experimenting with, we got some coming, is some lithium battery packs to keep the simplicity uh, and the cleanness of the, the run on all the wiring, but get a lot more available runtime. Uh, actually, we can go look at the truck. Let's go take a look over here. So that's all working normally. This is our work truck and it's got a 12, it's got a 24. So we'll let you guys see what it looks like inside the box. Got some extra parts and stuff in here. I need a flashlight, kind of kind of dark. We'll grab a little light so you guys can see a little bit better. We we'll use Dusty's phone. All right, hopefully you guys can see kind of what's going on in here. So spare parts, duh. You always got to keep spare parts on hand, but see we've got a 12 volt bank over here on the right side. We've got a 24 bank over here on the left and there's our standard two bank charger doing its thing. Uh, it's about as clean as you can run all that much wiring. So if we go out any bigger, we could expand and have two more batteries in here and increase our runtime. And we just have a lot more wires in there, which is fine, it ain't a big deal. We just try to make things look clean as possible. All right, guys, look, maintenance Monday. I hope that makes sense. If you're building your own systems and you're gonna run some of these 24 volt systems, our Smart Blend Pro, it's a 24 volt system. Now we've got a transformer on that, so you can hook it to 12 volts. The transformer will get it up to 24. We missing anything? I think you covered the bases. You covered them. I was just there as a shortstop. I got light now. That's a little bit better light. So. Hopefully that makes sense. It's dark in the shop. All right, guys, we'll leave it to that. Uh, hope that makes sense and gives you guys some pointers there as far as hooking it up. Make sure you make good connections, uh, short runs, and don't use some little bitty wire. Use some as thick as you can get it. Uh, you can go to Tractor Supply and they've got little jumper leads pre-made. Those are actually the best because they're crimped on at a factory. They have a good connection. I think that's about it. Got it covered. See y'all next Monday.